How are you doing guys? Welcome to the third and final part of our guide to the Bumble Cocktail Survival Handbook. If you haven't seen parts one and two, make sure you go and check them out now. Don't forget you can get all the tasty notes on our sister channel, The Distilled Truth. So if you haven't already, get over there and subscribe. If you successfully completed missions one to 10, congratulations, you are well on your way to becoming an elite home bartender. And now we've got another five missions for you today. They're getting a bit tricky, either some of the ingredients are harder to find or make, and some might look simple on paper, but if you get your technique wrong, you're gonna ruin the drink completely. So without any further ado, here's our final five missions from the Bumble Cocktail Collection Survival Handbook. All right guys, mission number 11 is the Corpse Survivor number two. One of my favorite cocktails and certainly my favorite of the Corpse Survivors, of which there is at least four and we'll definitely do a video just on those. We're gonna start with our first ingredient, which is freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now, depending on how big you want your drink or how big your glassware is, you can go 20 to 25, 30 mils. It's an equal parts drink. So that was 25 mils of lemon juice. And then we're gonna go with our next ingredient, which is a Lille Blanc. Again, 25 mils. Make sure you keep this stuff in the fridge once you've opened the bottle. Next is Cointreau or Triple Sec, 25 mils. And last but not least, our London Dry Gin, 25 mils. Incidentally, there's a bit of an argument whether Lillet Blanc is the correct ingredient to use in this because the original ingredient was Kina Lillet. So that's kind of the modern day version of, but a lot of people are saying that Cocky Americano is more closely related in flavor to the original Kina Lillet than Lillet Blanc. Hope you got that. Try, try them all, decide for yourself. Right, we're gonna shake this up. Throwing that into our frozen glass. We've just got a couple more ingredients. Now you could have added a dash of simple syrup to this if that doesn't quite balance well enough for you, but I am gonna do something else to just to give it a little bit of extra sweetness just to get that balance right. So we're gonna garnish this with a maraschino cherry. I'm just gonna get a bit of extra of the, the cherry syrup. Just whack that in, give it a nice extra Bit of sweetness and an extra flavour note. And then we finish it with a spritz of absinthe. I'm just gonna go two. You can just lay it over the top if you like. And that is a Corpse Survivor number two. All right guys, mission number 12 of the field manual. This drink needs no introduction. The Dry Martini, one of the most famous drinks in the world. It's quite easy to make, but there's a couple of factors you need to get right, if, otherwise you're gonna ruin the drink, and that is temperature and your base spirit. I keep all my glassware, my spirit, my mixing glass in the freezer, so I'm gonna go and grab those now. And this is also one of the few cocktails I recommend really splashing out on a decent base spirit. This is a real showcase for any gin or vodka that you're gonna put in this drink. I personally only ever go with gin, but that's entirely your choice. Right, we're gonna start off by icing our mixing glass, and then we're gonna add our dry vermouth, which has also been kept in the fridge. And once you've opened your vermouth, you must keep it in the fridge, otherwise it will go off. Now the other factor in a dry martini is your gin to vermouth ratio. I'm gonna go six parts gin to one part vermouth. You can go as crazy as you want. You can go equal parts. You can go heavy on the vermouth, more vermouth than gin. That's called a reverse martini. Or you can just literally rinse the ice with vermouth, pour it out and then add your gin for the driest of dry martinis. So I'm gonna go 10 mils, dry vermouth, 60 mils of our gin. I am using Junipero, which is my favorite gin of all time. Very juniper heavy, as the name would suggest. Overproof from San Francisco. Now, if you are using a slightly lower quality gin or not super premium and you want to add a bit of flavor and complexity, you can add a dash or two of orange bitters. I don't think Juniper needs it, but I'm going to do it just for the sake of this video. And then we'll get stirring. Now, one note, because everything is so cold, you might need to stir it a little bit longer to get the level of dilution you want. You might not want any dilution, which is called a naked martini. You could just grab the gin out of the freezer, pour it into a glass, dash of a move, and go from there. But depending on how much dilution you want, you're gonna need to stir and test 
That's almost right for me. I reckon that'll do it. Now I'm gonna go and grab my glass from the freezer. And we're gonna strain that into a frozen glass. And I'm gonna finish mine off with a lemon twist. Of course, the other option is an olive, but I think that's too powerful a flavor for me. Like I just, I want the gin to be at the forefront and I think the lemon zest brings it out rather than overpowers it like I find an olive does. Dry gin martini. Quick reminder guys, if you want the tasting notes for all the cocktails in this video and all the cocktails in this series of videos, you can get them over on our sister channel, The Distilled Truth. So make sure you get over there and subscribe. If you haven't downloaded your copy of the Cocktail Survival Handbook yet, they are still available for free download at bombalcocktails.com. Okay, mission number 13. Unlucky for some, but not for you, because this is my favorite of all the tiki drinks, the Mai Tai. We are gonna make Trader Vic's version, which is the simpler and I think tastier version. We're gonna start with our first ingredients, which is freshly squeezed lime juice. We're gonna go 25 mils. And next up is Orjat. We are gonna go 10 mils. 10 mils of triple sec. And then five mils of simple syrup. Like I always say, play around with those ratios, find out what works for you. I think this is a nice balanced version. The Orget and the triple sec aren't competing for flavor. They're all nicely balanced. And last of all, our rum, we are gonna use 50 mils of Mount Gay Clips. I think Trader Vic used a Jamaican rum originally, a Rain Nephew. Uh, but Mount Gay is lovely from Barbados. Right, we're going to shake that up. Don't need to go too crazy because we're going to serve this one over ice. Right, I'm going to strain this into a chilled rocks glass. So I'm going to top with some cubed ice. And then I'm gonna finish with some crushed ice. It's not technically crushed, it's like nuggets. We don't have a nugget machine here at the hideout anymore, unfortunately. But I found these awesome molds where you can get like these little ice nuggets that do the job perfectly. We'll put a link to them in the description. And that's it, we're just gonna garnish it. Put paper straw there, sprig of mint. Give it a light slap to release the aromas, but not too much, because you don't wanna release all of them just yet. And then, maraschino cherry, orange wedge, just lay that on top. And that is a Mai Tai. All right guys, the penultimate mission from the Cocktail Survival Handbook, and I think this is a true modern classic. This is by Sam Ross from 2005 at Milk and Honey in New York, the penicillin. We're gonna start with freshly squeezed lemon juice, 20 mils. Next up, honey syrup. This is the same as we used in the last video, two parts honey to one part water, 10 mils. Next up, ginger syrup. Now I've made this by literally just juicing some ginger root in a centrifuge juicer and then taking that juice, straining it, and then equal parts ginger juice and caster sugar until the sugar's all dissolved. There are other ways of doing it, but I find this to be nice, consistent, gingery. 10 mils with that. And last but not least, our blended scotch. I am using a Syla from Compass Box. I'm gonna go 50 mils. Then we're gonna shake that up. Gonna strain that into a frozen rocks glass. And then we just drop in one big ice cube. We'll finish this. So in here we've got another atomizer and I have got another compass box whiskey. This is called Peat Monster. So you need a spray of peated scotch over the top. You can, again, just layer it. I think this is a bit more consistent. So you just get the nose of the peat rather than it overpowering the drink. 
And then we're gonna garnish that with a bit of candied ginger and a nice big lemon wedge. And that's the penicillin. It's last, but it's not least. Well done guys, you made it to the 15th and final mission of the Cocktail Survival Handbook. And we're going to our old mate, Ari Craddock from his 1930s Savoy cocktail book for the chrysanthemum. I'm just gonna get my mixing glass because this is a stirred drink. And our first ingredient is dry vermouth. We are using Noali Pratt, 50 mils. Next up, Benedictine, 20 mils. Absinthe. I'm gonna say five to 10 mils, depending on how strong your absinthe is. This is quite a, quite a pokey one, so we'll go, let's go seven and a half. And just to finish it off, some orange bitters. We'll go two dash. And give that a stir. off with a big zest and that is mission accomplished chrysanthemum all right guys we made it through to the end of the bonville cocktail survival handbook if you completed all 15 missions successfully congratulations what was your favorite drink out of the 15 i think if i had to choose mine would be mission number one the daiquiri but let me know what yours was in the comments Thank you so much for all your positive feedback on this new space. We've really enjoyed filming in here and I'm glad you guys are liking it too. Let us know what you want to see on the next video. And don't forget to go and subscribe to our sister channel, The Distilled Truth, for even more content over there. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time. You ready? All right. <clears throat> all right, guys, the peanut, peanut. Penis <laughs> ultimate. The ultimate penis. <laughs> Alright guys, your penultimate mission from the Bonville Cocktail Lockdown <laughs> Survival Handbook. Alright guys, your penultimate mission from the Bonville Cocktail Lockdown Lockdown. <laughs> if you haven't got your if you ha if you haven't got your copy of the survival cocktail <laughs> if you haven't got your copy of the cocktail survival handbook yet, you can still down do <laughs> if you haven't got your <laughs> <laughs> Still download them for free at bumblecocktails.com. Right, on to number mission. On to number mission. <laughs> I was just going to kind of say. <laughs> Give it a, a light slap to release the aroma. You don't want to slap it too much, otherwise. You <laughs> I'll just say. Yeah. I reckon that'll do it. Now I'm gonna go and grab my freezer from the glass. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you are using a bit of a lesser quality gin and you wanna add a bit of flavor and complexity to it, you can add a dash of orange bitters. I don't think this one needs it, but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of this video. because this is my favorite tiki drink, the Mai Tai. We are gonna do Trader Vic's version, which is a lot simpler than, uh, and I'll get my... <laughs> what the f is that? Like a hair or something. Did you catch it? Okay.